Hi parents, this video is to help you guys with your writer's workshop. Um, this is not for your child to really watch because they already know that they need to um, use phonetic sounds to help out with their spelling. This is more of a, a guideline and an example of what you should let your child do during writer's workshop. It's important that you let your child spell the words the way they hear them and to try not, and I know it's really hard, but try not to correct their spelling. They need to experiment with their writing. It's very important that they experiment, that they um, develop the ability to hear the sounds on their own. That's what writing workshops all about. And to uh, begin the creative process of writing and thinking through with what they want to put on the paper. So it's, it's important that you let them do what they're interested in doing. Uh, I do my lessons with my daughter. She's in uh, JK, uh, or year one if you want to call it that way. And a lot of the, the writings, I get her to just write something that she's interested about, or I get her to watch a little um, video of a book online and she picks her favorite part or something she thought was interesting. So this one here, it was a video that she saw about otters and she drew a picture. Um, an undersea picture. So here she drew some kelp, okay, uh, and then she has the mother otter, and then here you can see the circle of the baby otter, and then she drew the water all around, okay? So what uh, Mr. Westmont uh, demonstrates in his videos is labeling. So we still want you guys to do some labels. Uh, I got Abigail to not just write the initial sound of her of her words in her pictures, but I'm trying to get her to get the beginning and the end and maybe even some of the sounds in the middle if she can hear them. So here for kelp, okay, you can see if you can see it, it's KP. So she got the K. She didn't get the L, but she got the P. Kelp. So she did KP for kelp. And then over here, she has uh, mother otter. So she has the M for mother. And then she did otter, otter. So she heard the O, the T, and the R. Okay. But don't correct. Just let them do it the way they got. She heard a lot of the consonant sounds. Consonant sounds are easier than the vowel sounds because there's two different sounds for the vowels. So it's a little bit trickier for vowels. Then she did baby otter here. She got the B and then the O-T-R. So she copied her otter from there and I told her to just write it the same way that she wrote it before. Okay. And then over here she wrote waves. W-A-V-S. And then down here she uh, wrote water. So that's what she heard for water. The E is not a sound that you hear. So that's completely understandable that she would spell water that way. Down here... She wrote her her sentence. Try and focus, uh, especially if they're year ones at JK. Uh -huh. Get them to do the beginning sound and end sound of the words. Focus on having a space between the words because often they jumble them together and that's what she did here. Uh, she jumbled a lot of it together. Do not erase their work. Okay, Let them do it. Just do reminders. Say, oh, you forgot to do your spaces. Let's do the space next time. Okay, so down here she did... Her, uh, her spaces better down there because I reminded her to do her spaces. Okay, we do not use erasers in our in my class. I don't know if Mr. West uses erasers, uh, but I want them to focus on the process. If they make a mistake, don't spend time erasing it and correct. Just scribble it out. If they understand that they made a mistake, don't point out that they made a mistake. Okay, um, just. If they hear a different sound and they change their mind or they don't like the way they printed the letter, just cross it out, okay? So here is uh, Mother Otter. So we have the M Otter, Mother Otter, the same way that she wrote it up here. I had her copy it down, okay? Mother Otter and, so she wrote and, you can see the A-N-D, 
and then baby otter, she copied it from the top, is floating, floating, floating in the water. Okay, so she was doing floating, but I realized that it's float and then in, so floating in. Okay, so down here at the bottom, I wrote it out myself. Um, I just scribed what she said so that I would remember it later on because sometimes it's tricky if they're only doing beginning and end sounds or if they're only doing first sounds, it's hard to remember what they were writing and sometimes they don't remember. So if you have those notes down at the bottom, it's quite helpful. Here she drew a picture of a tiger. Okay, so we have um, a baby tiger, and here down here she wrote, she wrote baby, she has a baby, B, and then tiger, T, then she heard all the sounds for has, H-A-S, and then she wrote different, she got the D, the F, and the T different okay and then stripes so s t r were the letters that she heard for stripes okay and the last one here she did about rabbits okay so here's a more of an example of her just sounding them out and getting more sounds. So what I have I have her do is I have an alphabet chart and I'll post an alphabet chart. You can have it on the screen and have it in front of her on an iPad or the computer and they can look at it or have a printout. Um, one of the activities last week I assigned was making an alphabet chart. So if you made that, you can have that beside them. And if they don't know the sound, point to the picture or not point, say the picture, like if she was having a hard time sounding out rabbit, okay? I would say rabbit, rabbit, and I would say it slowly for her, and I would get her to say it slowly with me, so she can make the sounds with her own mouth and hear the sounds as well. If she didn't know what R was after we sounded it out, and I said r a few times, I would look at what she has on her alphabet chart or what was on the uh, alphabet chart that I have that I send you guys and let's say the picture is rainbow so I would say find rainbow and she would look for the rainbow and realize that that's in the box for R so then she would copy and print the R. Do not tell them that it is an R. Try and get them to search for it in the alphabet chart and to use their phonetic knowledge to help find it. Okay. So here you can see rabbit, okay, so she got the rabbit, have, and then she wrote L. She wrote this later in pen, so I don't know what that has to do with it, but she has the L for long, and then she has E-R-S here for ears, hop, this is a new sentence, she wanted to write that they hop and poop, hop and poop. Because um, she found it really interesting that they could poop while they're hopping. And then rabbits. So she copied the same way she wrote rabbits up there. She wrote it down here. Eat. E-T. Plants. She got all the sounds except for the, uh, the T at the end. Okay. Um, so please, I encourage you to do Writer's Workshop at least once a week. Uh, Mr. West is going to start focusing on getting um, their own ideas for their writing. If they don't have an idea for their writing, um, use books as inspiration. Use um, everyday activities that you guys did as a family. And just try and make it as fun as possible. The more corrections you make, the more telling them that they're, they're getting the wrong sound on on the paper um, will lead to being discouraged to write and we don't want that to happen, okay? Um, so just get them to focus on the initial sounds. They're going to be missing some sounds and some words, especially when they're longer, and that's okay. All right? 
Um, so we just wanted to provide you with some uh, real life samples um, of what Writer's Workshop could look like. All right, so have fun working with your child and uh, let them be free to write. Thank you. Bye.